We're in Chicago. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff. Monday Night Football. We go to the fourth quarter, and there's a there's a guy who, who makes the signs up right in the middle of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always special to see old friends. Newsom begins the fourth quarter with a punt, and you know it's a funny thing. Poor Obi, who made the mistake before of running it out of the end zone, calls for a fair catch on a play on which uh, no Viking was within about eight yards of him. So he was gun shy there. Just wanted to haul it in, and they started the 17, 46 yard boot. They had a conversation on the sidelines before that one, Al. Well, we saw the Chicago Bears with, I believe, 106 yards at the end of the first half. They've bumped that total all the way up to 123. So. Offensively, a magnificent third quarter for the Bears, who have a grand total of four first downs this entire game. From they are being choked by the Vikings. No first downs in the third quarter, no conversions on third down. Neil Anderson takes the screen. And one of the few big gainers tonight for the Chicago Bears as he gets up to the 33 for a gain of 16. Good call against a tough rushing front four of Minnesota. The screen and set up beautifully. Hard well, ball under the pressure, draws it into him, and then pops it over to Anderson. Good. The set. perfectly designed play, Frank, is a screen to the side of the blitz, and that's exactly what happened. Number 51, there you see trailing the blade, Carlos Jenkins, came on the blitz. That takes him out of the screen, and that was just a, a good piece of work by the Bears. Uh -oh. Oh. Anderson gets wrapped up Henry Thomas welcome back to reality Dude, these front four guys are so quick Thomas came all the way from the outside on that play did a little maneuver to the outside came down the line watch him watch 97 now he'll step around the man trying to block him is Fontenot and recovering so quickly you're not supposed to be able to run around a guy and exactly. make a block. That's supposed to take you out of the play. Second and 11. Harbaugh throws underneath. That's Getney. Tight end puts both arms around it. His fumble uh, early in the game led to a Minnesota touchdown. This play uh, earlier on Harbaugh that set up a touchdown return. But Getney is keep in mind he was a he's a rookie from Syracuse, a third round draft pick that. Had a broken collarbone in preseason, so he really has not been able to work that much. Just got healthy a couple of weeks ago, and he has not put in that much time. So he basically is uh, playing his first couple of games. Third down young. and four. Harbaugh 10 out of 19 for only 109 yards. And Gedney makes the catch up to the 45-yard line, and they finally convert here. On third down, and it's as if the crowd begins to sense it. They were 0 for 10, now 1 for 11 on third down. Good catch on the part of Kevin. That ball was going way to his left. He spun around. His body was moving to the right. Made a good catch for a big man. There's 254 pounds. He reversed his thing rather quickly and comes up with the first down on a nice catch. At the 45-yard line. Harbaugh going deep and into a lot of coverage and almost intercepted. It's incomplete. Ben C. Glenn nearly intercepted it. And Glenn, remember, he was shaken up before with that knee injury, and he goes down to one knee on the sideline. And he's hurt again. <laughs> I'm surprised he got up as quickly as he did. It looked to me like he fell on the football after he comes across. That's Tom Waddle. And yeah, nothing will take the wind out of you like falling on the football. I think you're exactly right, Dan. And even with that, he got up and tried to run with it. Oof. On second and ten, Harbaugh throws, caught in Viking territory. That's Curtis Conway, uh, who is short of the first down. And, you know, Conway figured to be a big part of the scene tonight with the injury to Davis and what the Bears wanted to do with the, that Viking defense. So, so tough. This is number one of the lead coming into this. And there is Vincent Glenn on the sidelines. They'll continue to look at him. Vikings number one against the pass also. That's the classic look of a guy who got the wind knocked out of him or banged up his ribs somehow. You see them trying to help him breathe. and. 
move his abdominal muscles in and out, up and down. Third and one, that was Conway's first catch of the night. Anderson seeking that first down. And the Bears finally get something going after going over on third down. They picked up two in a row. Hayward leads the way. First down, Chicago with 11.35 to go in regulation. 19 to 9, Minnesota. How do they not call Henry Thomas for being offsides? This guy, this guy is crowding the ball. Look at him in there. He's cutting a fine line. I give him credit for that. Take a look at this matchup right here, and this is Thomas. He's in there ahead of his other teammates, and it looks like their helmets are almost touching. Draw, Anderson, nothing. You know what's really surprising to me, Dan, is you know the Bears are saying to the officials, hey, yeah. look at this guy. Yeah. You know, it's not as if uh, they're not being told over and over. Well, I don't know. Has an interesting stance, though, Dan. If you look at the ball, it's right under his head, unlike a lot of centers where the ball is out in front of him. And it even makes it look more so yeah. like he's offside. Yeah. No argument there. You take a look at Fonado, the ball is right below his head. He doesn't stretch it too far out in front of him. <laughs> second, second. That's and the old saying, one hand grenade will get them all. Yeah, they're intimate setting. Harbaugh scoots down to the 21-yard line. Well, he's got the best per carry average of anybody who runs the football for the Chicago Bears. He's the only one of their guys with better than a four-yard per carry average. And the way things are going, the Bears could do a lot worse than have Jim Harbaugh just drop back there and take off with the football. Yeah, he is a good athlete. Now, he runs away from a very speedy linebacker. That's Strickland. They brought him in there because of his speed. And he replaced Mike Merriweather, and Harbaugh just left him. From the 21, here's Anderson going next to nowhere. Fred Strickland stops him after a gain of a yard and a half with 9.45 to play. And there is no tougher guy that plays this position than I think I've ever seen. Maybe he isn't the most skillful. He's got a lot of good tools, maybe not great tools, but if you want toughness, number four has got it. If we were to put Ironhead on the scale tonight, what do you think he might tip him at? More than any offensive lineman they've got. He might be the heaviest offensive player the Bears have. Second and eight. Look out, Goldman on his move, but he gets it off to Anderson. To the 15 yard line is going to set up a very key third and four for Chicago. Third and four, you would expect in the past to be looking, the Bears would be looking for Waddle. He's their possession type guy. But the Vikings have shut him off tonight. Good drive, 69 yards, but it's taken almost six minutes. Keep in mind, this is a 69-yard drive by a team that had 126 yards in offense when it started. And no first downs in the third quarter. And they give it to Anderson, and that doesn't fool anybody. Henry Thomas tackles him for a three-yard loss. Well, if Donnell Wolford for the Bears has been turning in a huge defensive night, Henry Thomas and John Randall, oh, between the two of them, have to, they, they're printing a couple airline tickets for themselves to Hawaii as well. Henry Thomas in particular, look at the quickness, just blowing right by the Bear offensive line. Down after down after down. They're making a five-time Pro Bowler. Oh. Goldman look kind of ordinary to that. 35-yard Butler attempt, and that is Kevin's fourth field goal of the night from 37, 39, 55, and now 35 yards. So the Bears back within a touchdown. That next extra point is very important right now 19 to 12. KFC presents doing it right on Monday. 758 to go in regulation 19 to 12 Minnesota leads it and the Gardaki kick goes out of bounds at about the five which means it'll come out to the 35. Uh, Johnny Greer. We have a kickoff out of bounds. And Johnny Greer was the, uh, you know, he's the answer.